This is a 2020 Volkswagen Atlas Crossport that in episode one I aggressively lowered and upgraded and now I'm going to attempt to drive it 7,500 miles across all of the United States of America and back including crossing mountains, dry lake beds, major cities and a racetrack. Stay tuned. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Solar Work Suspensions, part of the KW Group, and available right now with a rebate via thesuspensionsource.com, who can also help you out with KW and ST suspensions. So please go check them out. Let me know if you buy some suspension also. This trip would not be happening without them. So at least give them some thanks, if not your business. Fuel stop number two, 580 miles in. Yes, I did go to ECS, got the Tule Tapui Low Pro three person tent, although I'm just solo. Put that on top. I'm not looking quite as low now, but obviously still running, well, very low. Uh, how much is gas here? $197, $1.97 for one US gallon, which is 3.8 liters. And I've been getting like 20 miles per gallon so far. Thank you to the suspension source for covering the gas on this trip. Um, I'm currently west of Columbus and the road is beautiful. I-70 west of Columbus is perfect. So able to keep a nice cruising speed. Um, what's next? Indiana, I think? We'll go find out. So instead of wasting gloves to try and avoid COVID, I'm just gonna use a single piece of tissue paper and then I can have kind of contactless fuel fills in theory. This was not a planned stop, but I'm now in Denver, Colorado, and the I-70 up into the mountain pass where I went to sleep tonight is completely closed because there's a big snowstorm, medium snowstorm, but a whole bunch of cart and tractor trailers have all crashed into each other. So the map is completely red, completely stopped. So I am stuck. Grab some provisions here. I've got extra water and stuff just in case I get trapped. I don't think that'll happen. Sun has set though. So I do have to set up the tent find somewhere off the road to park and set it up in the dark. Good, good times. No, really, I'm genuinely excited for this. I want to camp, I want to sleep outside. Don't want to be in a store, actually. All right, it's go time. I've bought my Hot Wheels car in there, but right now the highway is reopened. The Loveland Pass is completely closed, like done. It is actively snowing, like it's properly snowing. Guess what, the Delintes, the D7 Delinte are all season, but I just looked at them and they are rated for mud and snow. They have the M and S, M plus S. So I have mud and snow, all seasons, ultra high performance, but still rated M and S. I'm just gonna go for it. Right now it's saying there's a one and a half hour delay that I've got two gallons of water. I have a like negative 18 degree sleeping bag. I have the tent. Right now I cannot get to the pass that I want to sleep at, but there is a Walmart over there in Frisco next to Vail and it's at 9,000 feet and you can sleep in Walmart parking lots. So worst case, if I can't find somewhere wild to camp, I can get into the storm, hopefully over the mountain, over the continental divide, over like the 10,000 whatever feet and still camp up eight, 9,000 feet. So I'm okay with that. But right now I just gotta go. I just gotta do this. Low pros. 22 by 10. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So the Atlas Crossport does have a snow mode. So definitely putting that on for the traction. Why not? All right, over 11,000 feet. A little bit of ice build up. <laughs> Delentes did really, really well. Amazingly so. Look at the pack. Oh my gosh, look at that. Can you see? Look, oh man, that is terrible. The entire fender liner is completely full. We made it 11,000 feet. That's the Eisenhower Tunnel in the middle of a snowstorm. If you think I wasn't plowing that, that is all my own front lip plowing it. 
whole front is packed in. All I did was put it in snow mode with the uh, Talente mud and snow tires, the D7, which are going on a track. They are ultra high performance. All right, it's really cold. Um, I'm gonna go and descend. There's a 7% descent grade. So the danger is not over. Then in about half an hour, gonna get the tent out and sleep at about eight and a half thousand feet. And right now the temperature is 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what, negative seven or something Celsius? Not bad. Time to go set up the tent. I'm so cold. This car, this whole setup, greater than the sum of its parts. Oh, it's amazing. Well, I'm coming down off the other side of the mountain and I don't think the uh, dash cam got it, but there was just a tractor trailer squished upside down in the center, just left where it crashed, just like in Alaska. I guess they'll come and get it after the storm is done. Just pancaked. I hope whoever was driving is okay, but I, mean, I have fun spinning the tires and checking the ABS and stuff, but it is pretty serious and I, I don't take it too lightly. But yeah, I'm wild. Well, that's it. I'm set up for camp. It is 18 degrees, which is negative seven or eight or something right now. There's snow all over. It's still snowing a little bit. My hands are frozen from setting up the tent. Hopefully the sleeping bag's gonna retain some warmth. And, um, it is from Mountain Hardware. It is a $230 sleeping bag that is good for zero degrees. I think it's gonna get a bunch colder tonight, but um, yeah, hopefully once I'm snuggled up inside it, I'll be able to, uh, to get some good sleep. I can't wait to show you uh, the view in the morning because I can just about make out the mountains and it is spectacular. Well, good morning. Um, sleeping bags be great. In fact, I really don't want to get out of it. There is just ice inside the tent. I guess for me breathing and just moisture in general. That's it. Let's go take some photos of my camping site. Fold up the tent. Normally I can do it in about four minutes. Um, but when it's this cold, I don't think my hands are going to work very well. Heated seat. The uh, Atlas Cross Sport sounds pretty good right now. I mean, hey, big success. So tonight I'll sleep in it again, but this time in a desert where it's also gonna be cold. All right, I'm all loaded up for the day. Um, however, this is my water bottle that sat in the car last night. I was like, oh, it didn't freeze. No, no, it's a solid icicle apart from like this little bit of water there. See how much of that is ice? It was really cold last night. It's still 17 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like negative nine degrees. Um, yeah. Right, tonight, desert. Let's get down to Las Vegas. Well, this is I-70 in Utah. Very, very beautiful part, and it goes from kind of high desert into just like Star Trek. But this is mile marker 147 heading westbound, and this is a secret exit. It's not marked in the slightest. But if you just pull off here, there's a little gate just there, and that's a state park, and you can go rock climbing. You can basically, it's a little mini Moab. You can go all the way across there, and there's, yeah, all sorts of obstacles and it's just a really nice place. So if you're in a family sedan, you can just pull off, you can get quite far in. If you're in a four x four or you really wanna send it, yeah, you can really get up into those hills there. And it is amazing and well worth doing. But again, just pull over, 
open the gate, pull through, close the gate. Make sure to close the gate behind you. Unfortunately, there is quite a steep little drop off as you can see. And I tried really hard and there's a bunch of scrapes that I have made. So although I've been on this before with a very low car, the Atlas crossbar is too low to make it. So I'm gonna get off the side of the highway. Not much traffic, but still not a good place to stop. But again, mile marker 147, well worth the exit. This is the end of I-70. So you can either go north to Salt Lake City or yeah, head south and go to Las Vegas. But this is it. This is the end of the cross country road, basically. Or this one, there's a bunch of them. Well, now I'm in the dry lake bed in Nevada, set up, however, it is literally one degree above freezing. It is like 33, 34, so that's like one degree Celsius. What the heck, can't even get warm in one of the driest places around. Oh, it's been a long day, I'm exhausted. Um, but yeah, I still have to wear my hat and get in my super crazy mountain hardware sleeping bag to try and stay warm. But hey, it's a lot warmer than yesterday. It's not snowing. I don't know the last time it rained here. It probably doesn't rain here once a year. But anyway, until tomorrow, good night. Well, good morning. There's the view. Now, it is really cold, so I'm still wrapped up in the blanket. Ah, sleeping bag. Ah, brain no work yet. 6 a.m. Sun rising still. Whew. Not bad. So, photos have been taken. Drone shots have been taken. The sun is now rising. As you can see from the shadow, it is still very low on the horizon. But it's still cold. In the sun, it feels a bit warmer, but it's still below freezing. Um, I slept really well. The extra cold sleeping bag in the just below freezing temperatures was the ticket. I did go to sleep wearing, yeah, my sweatpants, but halfway through the night, not to be too not safe for work or whatever, but I did take them off and just sleep in my boxer shorts and that felt wonderful. That's it. Now Vegas. Well, really just junk food in Vegas. That's why I'm here. And then, uh, yeah, head down to California. Let's go visit KW and... Yeah, suspension source, see KW Glen. Oh, we have a very cool car to uh, share with you there. But for now, from the middle of, well, pretty much nowhere, I want to fold up the tent. Should I video? No, I've already done a video on this. Link here or in down below on how to uh, fold up the tent. <laughs> So I drove in on darkness, uh, under darkness last night, but that seems really like steep and rutted, but yeah, I guess that's why it's a dry lake bed, but we gotta go find that. <laughs> So this is Chinatown, I can take this off now. This is Chinatown in Las Vegas. It's a really cool spot on the uh, west side of town. Great, great food, but also Ronald's Donuts. And this is a kind of elderly Chinese couple that make accidentally vegan donuts. And um, they're Buddhist, there's little Buddhas around. They give a donut to Buddha in the morning. It's a little shrine offering. One dollar vegan donuts, two dollars for fancy donuts, bear claws, all kind of amazingness. So. This is my one stop for food, <laughs> literally. Like, I've carried all my own food otherwise, except for this one stop. I'm so excited. Let's show you the donuts. Yo 
So from inside the Volkswagen Atlas Crossport, I hope that you have enjoyed episode two. Stay tuned for part three with even more craziness to come. And again, thank you so much to the suspension source as the interior lights dim. Where's the button for it? There we go. For helping make this happen and KW suspension as well. This, this, is, this is madness and there's a lot more to come. But for now, wash your cars, wash your hands, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment, and we'll see you next time for episode three. Goodbye.